Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Chats with Gabby. Today I have my beautiful friend who we not only just share our beautiful month, but we share the same birthday. I want to welcome you to Maria Duenas. Hello, and thank you so much for having me, Gabby. Yes. I feel so honored to be here today. Oh, I'm so happy that you accepted my invitation. <laughs> yes. Although it took us a few so days, times. weeks to kind of get, get our together. schedules. But, you know, maybe today was the day yeah. to record. I think so. It was it was meant to be for today because it worked out for sure. <laughs> yeah, so I'm so happy, and it's just crazy to know that I found someone that shares the same birthday as me. It's crazy. I I can't believe that we share the same birthday. And the way we found out it was it was so funny. But it, it was Cracker Barrel, it, it was right? a Cracker Barrel. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it was just so funny. And I actually wanted to take a moment to mm. say happy birthday. If there are any any birthdays in August yeah. or today, tomorrow, any day in August, I believe we should celebrate the whole month. Yes. I feel like I wait too long. We wait a whole year. (laughs) I mean, everybody waits here. But I personally feel like, I know I deserve to to celebrate the whole month. For sure. I mean, we wait so long for it. And then when it arrives, it's just one day and it it goes by so short. It's like, that's so, it. Happy birthday to all the August babes out happy there. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> but Maria, I know today you're going to be telling us um, your IBF story. Mm-hmm. But before we get into that, I kind of want to hear a little bit about your background, where you're from, and all that good stuff. Okay. Well, um, I was born and raised in Virginia. Um, I have two amazing parents. Um, and my dad, he is from Cuba. My mom is from Peru. So that makes me Cubana Peruana. Wait, 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 let me ask you something because I have my my kids are half Honduran, half Mexican, mm-hmm. and my husband always asks them like, "Who do you identify yourself more?" Right, and they identify themselves more with Honduran. Yes, that's true. How, what do you identify yourself with more? So okay. My mom will get on to me for this, but I, <laughs> she really will. But I would consider myself more Cubana, um, especially because I just went um, to, to Cuba, Cuba two years ago to celebrate, well, at the time, our three-year wedding anniversary. And I went to discover my roots. I've been to Peru like almost every year since I was born. And I love Peru. I love it so much, the culture and everything, my mom's side of the family. Um, but I felt when I went to Cuba for the first time, it was you like identified yourself. It was more. amazing. I I identified myself to so many things, not just the culture, but I. So I have a loud laugh for those who know me. <laughs> yes, you do. And I discovered that I have a cousin who laughs just like me. Wow. And I what was happened when you heard her laugh and you guys oh, were laughing? Oh, it at was the same like time? it was crazy. It was like at one point we became in unison, like. <laughs> And Erlix was just like staring and just were like, you like oh my god because it's like you never think and right. I was like I thought my laugh was like original <laughs> but she has the same laugh as me wow. and she's an older cousin and it was amazing and she said the same thing like she was like oh my gosh prima tu ries como yo and I'm like oh my gosh and we just wow. kept laughing and so yeah I identify myself um more like Cuban. more Cubana um I feel like appearance wise too yeah um just, yeah, you look more Cuban. Yeah, because like I'm like. Even though my skin. husband says that you look like from what was it, it Middle Middle Middle, Middle East, Israel, no, or it was yes, Israel. Like, <laughs> yeah, so it's which like, was I mean, the you're first. You're beautiful. Thank you. You're so beautiful. You have beautiful eyes. Thank you. Your eyelashes. <laughs> That I prayed for my daughter to have yes. your eyelashes. She's so beautiful. She does. She has long eyelashes. She has long eyelashes. So um, this is the first time I actually say it. I, yeah. I prayed specifically for my daughter's eyelashes to be like yours. That That's, I mean, that, I feel so special just to know that. I remember when you told me that a long time ago while you were pregnant. Yeah. I, I believed it for you. And yeah. like, I really did. And look, she has beautiful eyelashes. She, and I just hope that they look like that when she puts mascara. Oh, they will. I own mask. It's gonna be like up to her eyebrows. <laughs> yes, yes. But that is amazing. And I know that you are married. You have yes. a, a little a little baby girl who's six months. Yes, I do. Um so Ariella is my daughter's name, Ariella Grace Duenas. And um she's just 
She's incredible. I, yes. I love her so much. She is an answered prayer and more. She's a miracle baby. Yes. How long have you been married? We're going on five and a half years of wow. marriage. Seven years together, but five and a half married. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. It, that it is really amazing. Is. And, you know, going to, to go into the topic of your IBF story, um, I know that at a young age, or mm -hmm. I don't know, that's what I want you to tell me. At mm -hmm. what age were you are told that, you know, it's going to be hard for you to have kids? So it was when I was 13. Um, I, I noticed that I didn't regulate um, normally. Um, I had an irregular cycle. And not only did it affect um, my cycle, but it affected many other things. And so I went to see a specialist and that's at when, that age? at that age, and that's when I was diagnosed with PCOS. What um, is PCOS? So basically it's a hormonal um, disorder. Um, and basically where you have cysts on your ovaries. Um, at the time, you know, when I was told, I, it sounded bad. It was like, you know, you have PCOS. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, at the time I was just like, oh, well that. That sucks. You know, what right. does a 13 year old say to that? Okay. You know, <laughs> my mom, of course, you know, with the language barrier, she didn't understand. She's like, yes, that's all, you know, so we had to do our research. Um, and there's certain like remedies to help it, but there's no like per se cure for right. it. Um, but, you know, so the doctor goes and tells me, you know, you have PS PCOS and um, it's more than likely it's going to be very difficult for you to get pregnant. And, and they're told, they tell you this at that age. At that age, yeah. Right. And I was shocked because it's like, what doctor tells you that right. at such a young age? But that's what he told me. And so, you know, at in that moment, I remember looking back and I was like, well, okay. well I don't want kids now, so right. whatever. <laughs> you were so, so you know, little. You were just a exactly, little girl. I was a kid. I was just entering my teenage years, so I didn't really pay much attention to it. Um, but I remember, um, you know, now entering – you know, I get engaged, right? And then so when I was engaged to Erlix, you know, we talked about a family. We talked about our dreams, our visions, what our ideal, like, future, future of, like, like, what a marriage would Did look like. Did you ever tell him your condition? So I didn't. At you the didn't. time, I didn't. Okay. Not even no. when you guys were dating. Not even when we were dating. I think it was till after because – um I remember when we were at the church in the sauna. Yeah. <laughs> I forget what, what, what road it was on. It was on Maxim. Maxim Road, yes. Well, we all refer to that church as the sauna. It was so hot. And I guess we'll just have to explain it. It was it was a very small um, place, mm -hmm. and it was just so hot. So hot. Like the air conditioning, I guess it didn't work. Yeah. It didn't have any, but it was super hot you super literally hot. felt like you were going to a sauna so mm -hmm. i know abby mentioned it on the last episode <laughs> oh, yeah she did <laughs> the sauna is a church that mm -hmm. we used to go to but so, yes i remember that i remember we had our guest um speaker um pastora chani garcia yes. and she was ministering and i remember i was you know there during worship and she gave me a word and I know it was the Holy Spirit using her life because nobody knew about... At this point, no one knows. And at this point, Ehrlich and I... It was the day before Ehrlich and I got engaged. Really? Mm -hmm. And... Um, or wait. No, that was... This, it was the day after. I'm sorry. It okay. was the day after we got engaged. It was, it was a Sunday. Because it was a Sunday, yeah. And then the conference was, was on a Saturday. Saturday when he proposed to me. Okay, so, so yeah. it was after. So it was the day after. So she gave me a word. And to, to sum it up, she basically, you know, told me like what what was told by the doctors, it's not true. And God right now is healing your vientre. And she put her hand over my womb. And I just remember a fire. Like just, I can't, that's the best. That you can to, explain. Yeah, it. it was just so hot. And I remember falling. And I that and from there, I don't remember anything else. But I remember I received that. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, there's no coincidences with God. Right. Because how would she know about, like, in that case, to get technical, I have cysts over my ovaries, which means that it was difficult for me to get pregnant. And she says, you are now healed. Wow. So she had no idea. Right. So. And I remember that day. Yes. I was sitting all the way in the back. And I think when she told you that, I think it was like, 
a lot of people were not there anymore. Mm -hmm. And I remember her praying over you and saying, you're going to have your kids. Yes. And I was like, wow, you know, and I've never forgotten that day. Mm -hmm. And I can still picture me all the way in the back and you were on the corner with her. Yes. And her giving you that word. So from that day, you believe it. I believed it. And, and we get, so then, you know, we're engaged at that point. I told Ehrlich, you know, it's crazy. You know, that pastora, she gave me a word and I don't know if you know this. I don't think I did tell you, um, but this is what I have. And Ehrlich was just like, what? Like, that's crazy. That, that was God then giving you yeah. confirmation that you are going to be pregnant one day. Cause the only one obviously that knew was my family, like my right. mom, my sister, things like that. Um, so that, that happens. And here we are now married, newlyweds, you know, I don't know why I use like, um, what is it called? The uh, <laughs> birth control, birth, yeah, a birth control method because, you know, and <laughs> to my not like, I can't like at the, I don't want to say I can't, but you know what I mean? It was, it was difficult for me to conceive. So I don't know why I use contraceptives because <laughs> So I know. remember I was talking about it. We're like, when we were just laughing about it. Yeah, like, we were laughing about it. Like, like why, why did, did I you even do use it? And I was like, you know what? I don't even know. I think because it was a thing because everybody had it was at the marina. Yeah. So everybody had it. I'm like, well, you know what? Might I'm well married now. Might, <laughs> was, <laughs> might as well get it. Even though I wanted to become pregnant. Right. But so you, know, you guys couldn't, you guys get married. Yes. And do you guys talk about, you know what? We want to have kids right away or you guys wanted to wait? So we really didn't talk of set in stone when we just okay. knew that we wanted to. Okay. But so, so we were, we were, I guess, taking care of ourselves the first year, second year comes. And I think that was when it was the hardest part of our marriage during our second year of marriage. And I just remember like from nothing, this like huge desire in my heart came and it was for me to become a mother at that moment. I remember it clearly. I was in my car driving to work and I just remember driving and it's a, like, I was like, I want to be a mom. And it was in that moment where I was like, but how, how am I going to become a mom? But then I remembered the word that was prophesized over me. I was like, it's going to happen. How, when, I don't know, but I know it's, it's going to happen. happen. And so that's when, you know, I sat down and I talked to my husband, Ehrlich's and I told him, like, you know, I really, really want for us to start trying. And thankfully, you know, he was down for it. He wasn't scared. He was like, okay, let's try. Okay, so he wasn't like, no, let's wait. No, we weren't. Like, no. Let's go for it. He was like, let's do it. So we tried, you know, obviously the natural way. And I want to say for a year and a half and nothing. And I was like, why am I not pregnant yet? A year and a half. It's a long time. And so um, we... We're just, you know, we weren't going to just sit down and with our arms crossed, you know, because I believe that faith requires action, too. It's not just sitting back and waiting on God. Sometimes God calls us to do something about right. it. So I was like, let me do my research. OK, I know that there's women who have PCOS who still get pregnant. So um, I did my research and um, I heard of IVF. Right. So I was like, oh, my Had God. Had you heard it before? I've heard of it before, okay. but. I didn't really pay much attention to it, to what it is, how it works. Right. Um, so, you know, I was like, wow. But then I was like, well, I don't know. Hopefully I don't have to go to that route because that's like worst case scenario. Right. Right. Um, but I remember going to work and, you know, this was just me doing my research before I even told Ehrlich about IVF. And so I remember my coworker, his husband, I mean, I'm sorry. Her husband. <laughs> <Cut that off. laughs> Her husband. Um told me that, you know, my wife um, is also trying to get pregnant. And, you know, we're actually pregnant now because we started IVF. And I was like, oh, my gosh, because we were, somehow in the mix, we were talking about PCOS and his wife apparently had the same thing that I did. Oh, wow. And she she was pregnant at the time, but they seeked a fertility specialist. And so he was like, you know, so I you can, saw it as ho like a hope for you. Exactly. And I was just like, oh, my gosh. And he's like, I felt weird to ask. I was like, can I have her number? Can I talk to your wife? He's like, oh, yeah, she would love to talk to you about it because, you know, at the time she was in my shoes. Right. So we exchanged numbers and I, you know, she passed along her doctor's information. And um, I remember doing my research and then making my, that first initial appointment. And I was a perfect candidate 
they were like, Maria, from what you're telling me, your history, um, we do suggest you to, so there's two methods, right? There's IUI and then there's IVF. So what's the difference? So the difference is IUI, it's basically when you're on your cycle, they will inseminate right okay. there. Okay. Um, by looking at an ultrasound. And then um, with IVF, it's a whole process. It's injections, it's ultrasounds, it's seeing if you don't have cysts to clear for you to do the transfer. It's surgery, retrieving all your eggs, mixing it and all that stuff, and then inserting it back. Right. So it's a whole process. So he was like, you can go the IUI route, but because you don't have regular cycles, he was like, your probability of it being successful is probably like 10%. Wow. And I said, so well, what's the likelihood of IVF? He's like about 75%. And that was a significant difference. I was right. like 75% is better than 0% right. from what Ehrlich and I have been trying already. Right. So I was like, let's do it. Right. So um, I talked to Ehrlich and he was like, okay, let's, if this is what it takes, then let's do it. And so he was always on board. He, he always supported always you board, and never yes. said, no, let's keep trying. Mm -hmm. He never said that. He never said no. Wow. He, he honestly was my biggest supporter during all of this. Did you, I know because you, you, you obviously talked to him about it, but mm -hmm. did you ever consult it with like anyone else or it was just like y'all's little secret? Well, I mean, so my family, like I, I, had them in the loop of things because they were like, when are we going to have our grandbabies and things like that? But they also knew that I was struggling. Um, so they, they supported us. They were like, Oh, oh wow. yeah, Maria, do it. You so they were this. never like, no, Maria, let's no. try the natural way. Let's mm -hmm. not go that route. No. Well, because they knew that we were trying the natural way and it wasn't working. So they're like, if this is what it has to take, then go for it, Maria. Like, don't let it stop you. you wow. Know? And so that's exactly what we did. And, um, you know, it was hard at first because with IVF comes a lot of financial stuff. I mean, it's not, ex um, not expensive. It's not cheap yeah. at all. And, um, you know, we just took our faith and we we're like, you know, if God is opening doors for us to go this route, we know that he's going to show off. We know that he's going to make a way for us. Right. Let me ask you something. At any point, did you doubt it or you always felt so secure, like, this is the route I should go? Or were you ever like, God, like, do you want to do it the natural way or should I do IVF? Did you ever have that question? So I did at first. I was like, man, this is a huge step. This is a huge thing. I mean, it's we're talking about not just money, but we're right. talking about surgery, like major surgery and all the things that come with it. But I felt such a peace that I knew that it was God reassuring me that it's going to work. Right. And I think that's the that's the beautiful thing. And that's the most important thing that when you have that peace, you know that it's it's God. Yeah. You know that you're like, this is the right thing or this is the right move to do. Mm -hmm. For sure. And then so you guys and you know what? I was thinking about it because I'm like, wow, to be able to do that, you have to be so determined. Yeah. So persistent. And, you know, it's not like, okay, let's start. And then it's like, you know what? Never mind. Mm -hmm. This is too much. Did you ever felt like at some point, like, you know what? I'm going to give up. Well, funny thing is, Gabby, is that, okay, so I feel like God gave me like this bone, like, I don't know how to say that in English. Gift. Le yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this gift of persistency. Um, when I want something, I go after it. Oh, I know. And <laughs> I go after and, and I admire that <laughs> from you. you. <laughs> when you want something, you will not stop until you yes. get it. I don't let anything stop me, no matter how hard it is or far it may seem. I need some of that <laughs> from you. <laughs> but that that's honestly what it was. So, you know, I was like, okay, I'm in it and like I'm going. Like I'm going all 100%. in. percent Exactly. And so I was like, you know, if, it was just no coincidence. Like, you know, how did my coworker, we exchanged this conversation his, telling me, you know, his wife has the same thing and now she's pregnant with IVF. And, you know, I've been praying for such a long time at the time, you know, give me signs, you know, show me a way of like how we can do this for me to become a mother. And I know that me having that, that huge desire to become a mother wasn't just for whatever reason. I knew like 100%. And now I can say this 
more than ever with Ariella here is that God deposited that in me. Yes. And I knew it was for a reason. And if he deposited in me, it was because it was going to come through. Wow. And and that's what my mentality was going in. Right. Was, you know, he put this desire in me and I know that it's going to fulfill. Wow. So. And I'm sure it wasn't easy. Can you talk a little bit about that process? Yeah. What it was like, how it started and all the, the roller coaster, you know, yeah, it's, with, I mean, it's, the it's whole process. so much. The process is so much because... It's like not only do you just say, okay, I'm going to get pregnant. No, there's things, for, there's so many steps in order for you to get to that. Um, so many appointments. I mean, I saw so many doctors. I got blood drawn like crazy um, because they had to check constantly. I had to get so many ultrasounds because they had to check if there were cysts. And because of my condition, you know, that's what they had to check for because it would have been unsafe. Right. Um, for us to move forward. So they started me off on, you know, medication to trigger, to get me a cycle. Since I didn't have regular cycles, this medication was kind of like tricking my body to have a period, even though I couldn't naturally have one on my own, but the medication helped me. Okay. So in order for me to get a period, it was with that medicine and that's where it started. So So that was like the first step, the first step. And so then I had to get ultrasounds and they kind of had to check my endometrial lining. So that's what holds your baby. And so if there were cysts, we had to cancel the process. And, and it, start all and over start over. Again. And that happened twice. And I was so hopeful because it's like we you but have But from a, the when you start and to that point, mm-hmm. how long was the wait? Well, that time I think it was like four or five months. And wow. then the second time it was like three months, but it, it was just, it was so much because, um, I remember just being so upset because I was like, I'm doing everything like, right. I, like you're following, you know, <laughs> yes. to the T and it's not working. It's not working. And I, and then I, and I told, you know, in prayer, I'm like, God, you brought me this far. I know you're going to finish. And I know that this is just a little speed bump, but it's just a setback to, move forward for what's coming right and so after that i remember doing you know continuing the protocol that the doctor had given me and from that moment that was everything was it was good they're like okay now you're ready for surgery because um with the medication and the injections the injections also was were helping me produce eggs Mm -hmm. because i couldn't produce it on my own because in order for you to produce eggs you have to ovulate and when you ovulate, that means you're on your cycle, right? But since I didn't cycle regularly, you I wasn't ovulating. Exactly. You weren't having eggs. None of that. None of that. And so it's amazing how God even uses science and all these and methods. how He created us exactly. And it, and you learn so much with IVF. It's amazing. But so I remember it was the day of surgery. It was in 2019 in October, and Ehrlich was able to go with me. This was way before COVID, and. Um, they knocked me out, you know, it was a, it was a surgery, but it, I think it was like 20 minutes. If that, they prepped me, put me under anesthesia and they retrieved all my eggs. And so mind you, three or four months prior to that surgery, I was doing injections on my abdo- abdominal area every day to create these eggs. Were you ever scared like to do the first one? No, <laughs> no. Wow. I, it's crazy. I wasn't. You're so brave. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't scared. I was, it's because... Again, I just wanted to be a mom yeah. so you bad. You were so focused yeah. at the bigger picture yes. that you weren't caring to poke yourself, exactly. to inject yourself. I was like, if this is what it takes, I'm all in, you wow. know? And so I remember waking up from surgery and then Ehrlich was right next to me and he's like, you did amazing. And we were just waiting on the doctor to see how many eggs. So the doctor comes in and he's like, you're a rock star. And he says, we were able to get 33 wow. eggs. And from someone that never produced exactly, so it anything. was a, it was a huge deal for me. I was like thirty three, and I was hoping for like three. You know what I mean? <laughs> At least you know, but but thirty three, wow. you know. And so we had to wait because there there's a cycle. So after that, then that's when the eggs have to meet um, the sperm. So you know, obviously my husband's sperm meet with my eggs, and then you wait to the. That's when the fertilization process right. comes. 
So that in that moment, it's a crucial moment because you have to see what survives. Because just because a sperm reaches an egg doesn't mean it's going to survive and become an embryo. Right. So, so they do that with all your eggs? Yes. Okay. They do that with all my eggs. So out of the 33, you had to wait 24 hours. They okay. called me the next day or no. Yeah, no, the next day. And they said, okay, Maria. So out of the 33, 10 survived. Right? Oh. But I mean, when you when you hear it, it's like, wow, that's that's huge. Like from yeah. 33, now knock that down to 10. Yeah. They only survived. So the 10 reached to the blastocyst stage. So the blastocyst stage is when it's about to form into an embryo, right? Okay. Which is the five-week stage okay. of a baby, right? So um, we went ahead and did the genetic testing. And so that's not always required, but we wanted to just be safe and just do the genetic tasting. And that's just to check on abnormalities, mm -hmm. like for Down syndrome, things like that. Okay. Um. So out of the 10, only five were left. Okay. Now they didn't, they couldn't tell us the reasons if it was like an ab abnormality like that, right. but it was just- Hey, but that was half of them. Half of it, right? Yeah. You know, we still have- five healthy embryos, right? So that's just amazing. It's amazing, right? So from 33 to 10 to five. So we're like, this is it. We have five. And I remember just getting emotional and just already in that moment, um, imagining my kids' future. Right. And um, so with the five, they're like, okay, so now we got to prep you for transfer. So the transfer... How long did you have to wait for a transfer? That's a whole nother process. Oh my God. So that's another step. <laughs> I'm of sure God worked, your patience grew, your faith grew oh, yeah. through this process. For sure. My, I think my faith was like, has grown tremendously Because I, that. you know, a lot of times we want things, ja. Yes. We want them now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everything was like step by step and yes. everything had its process and its timing and okay, now we have to wait. Mm -hmm. Now you finally get to this point where you have five embryos. Yes. And now you have to start another procedure. Start another, yeah, exactly. So that, here comes the second part of the protocol. And so I'm like, okay, we have five. So they're frozen, right? They're just waiting for me, right? <laughs> so I now have to do another round of injections. And so they were two. Um, one was a Lupron and the other one was a progesterone. So the Lupron were, um, I would administer them on my, on my belly and that was to prevent cysts from growing Okay. because again, because of my because condition. Of, mm -hmm. And so the progesterone is to help, um, it would go like, kind of like, um, in your hip and like in my hip. Yeah. And, um, so Ehrlich's would do those on me and those were, were painful because the needle, I kid you not, was like this long and it was super thick. And because it's oil, imagine inserting oil in your in your bloodstream or like inside of you. You know what I mean? It's it's thick. So you can feel the thickness inserting your body. Oh my gosh. And, and how I, many did you have to do of those? So that was every night before going to sleep. But how much how long did you do that for? For three months. Oh my goodness. And <laughs> so it was it was a lot. And mind you, I also did the belly ones every morning. And so um, with those, you have to wait and you have one. So you get a sp specific date. So once those three months were done, um, the, the doctor gives me a date and that's your last ultrasound. And so they call the baseline ultrasound okay. before transfer. Okay. So this is just to check if everything's good. Your endometrial. Like right before. Exactly. They check for your um, endometrial lining to be at a specific like thickness because that is the cushion to hold your baby. baby. Mm -hmm. So, um, I remember everything was good. Um, so, you know, with the genetic testing, they can also find the gender. Right. And we didn't want to know, um, because we wanted to do the whole gender reveal. Right. And so we're like, okay, let's do this. So everything looked good. The baseline ultrasound was good. So my transfer was going to be scheduled for that very next day, which was, which was December 10th of 2019. Okay. okay. And so um, I remember going in and I was so nervous. That was the first time I was nervous because it was like wow. leaving here 
like i'm gonna be pregnant right like this was like oh my gosh mm-hmm. i finally made it here I we finally are. made it we're finally they're gonna transfer this yes. embryo inside of me and like you know erlix was like how you felt this piece and he was like we got this i know that everything everything's gonna be good so that's when they transfer the embryo inside your uterus and it's 10 if that 10 minutes it's not like a they surge. don't put you to sleep or anything no you're you're awake all this time you're, you just feel pressure um a deep pressure because did you see the embryo they so the, so when you're laying on the bed um they show you the ultrasound so they they tell okay. you like here's your embryo and you get to see it being placed in your uterus it's amazing wow and so they're like this is it and they give you a picture once you leave they're like here's your embryo and wow. it's amazing like just amazing and right, so right. I remember leaving and I was like, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. And I know I'm pregnant. So the the protocol is that two weeks after transfer, you have to, it's called a two week wait, right? And the two week wait is called, um, it's called for that reason is to prove that you're pregnant. So to make sure that the embryo implanted in your uterus, because it's still not a hundred percent guarantee. It looks like an embryo, but it's the two week wait for you to see if it can still sustain there. And so um, we waited the two weeks, and I remember I was just so nervous. Th- those two weeks at Sem- that point felt like an forever. eternity. <laughs> if, I was like, you know, and I remember grabbing my stomach and just, I know that you're growing. I know that you're implanted, and you're you're, you're going to do amazing things. And I was just praying over my baby's yes. life. And sure enough, I went in to get the blood work two weeks later. And they had confirmed my pregnancy. Oh, Maria. And I remember. What did you feel at that time? Oh, my gosh. It, just to hear the word pregnant. Yeah. I was like, you know, it's one thing when you say it, but when you right. hear like a doctor Someone's tell you. Someone's confirming And they're you. confirming it. It's just a whole nother level, yeah. you know. And I just remember so excited. I was already like planning how I'm going to tell my parents because it was going to be right before Christmas. I'm like, what perfect gift than to tell them on Christmas Day. Right. And, you know, that's when we told my parents on Christmas Day. We told our loved ones. And it was an amazing celebration. I remember the video was oh. amazing to see your mom yes. in her Christmas pajamas <laughs> yes. and how happy she was, like, made me cry, you know, It so was emotional because it was, it was so much joy because they knew, like, they didn't even know that I was doing the transfer. They were just like, they knew that we had started, but I didn't ever tell because I wanted to surprise them. So right. I never told them when our transfer date right. is, you know. Um, so they were just over the moon. And we were in that moment, it was um, it was short lived. Um, because after the new year, I remember. After, the, after New Year's? After New Year's. So at that point, I was seven and a half weeks pregnant okay. when I told my parents. So by New Year's, I was like eight weeks and some days, so two months pregnant. And I remember um, I was at work, and all of a sudden, I felt this huge cramp. Like, I don't know. Not like a normal cramp. Not like a normal cramp. And I was like, like, I remember just like grabbing my stomach, and I was like, you know, trying not to pay attention. And then I was like, okay, that was weird. But then as the day, like, continued, I felt this, like, blotch, like, gunk, you know. And a was, blood. A that blood. Had like, that I, well, shot. I didn't know it was blood, but I just okay. felt, like, this gunk, right? Like, and I was like, what, what was that? And so I rushed to the bathroom, and I saw blood. And it was in that moment where I was like, anybody knows, like, when you see blood when you're pregnant, like, that's not a good sign. Right. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. I just remember in the bathroom, I was like, no, 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 no. Like, this can't be happening. No. I called my doctor. They're like, okay, um, it could be many things. It can be implantation bleeding. It can be like, what kind of, like, is it dark? Is it light? I just, I remember just like becoming numb in that moment. And the doctor was just talking and talking. And I just froze because I was just standing there in the bathroom looking at that blood. And, um... It Did was, you feel it in the moment? In the, in the moment, it wasn't that like I thought I lost my baby, but I just I just thought this is not good, and I was just praying. I called Erlix, and he's like, "No, just don't don't. That doesn't mean anything. Like right. we're gonna pray our baby's fine." Um, and they were like, "Okay, that was a Friday, so they're like, come back Monday." 
we'll get you tested and we, we want to see your HCG, HCG levels go up, which HCG is your pregnancy hormone. They're like, we want to see it go up. If it goes up, you're fine. I was like, okay. And if it's so not, then what does it mean? Three days. So I was just like trying and trying, trying so hard to stay calm. And um, Monday comes. And I remember I had an appointment. My boss knew what was going on. They're like, take the time you need. So Christina, my sister, met up with me to my office. And from there, we rode together. And I remember her just like saying, Maria, everything's going to be fine. Don't worry. So we go get the blood work. After the blood work, you know, it takes some time. So you had to go get the ultrasound. And so I remember going to the ultrasound and the tech, you know, the techs aren't supposed to say anything. But because the tech knows me, because I've been there for such a long time, because she would check my ultrasounds since the beginning, I think she kind of just opened up with me more than she was supposed to. Right. And um, I just remember when she was, you know, using the ultrasound monitor, looking at me and stuff, um, I was like, is it okay? Is, Is my baby okay? And she just hands me tissues. And it was in that moment that... Christina just grabs my hand and she's like, Maria, it's okay. And then she was like, the doctor will be right with you. And so then the doctor comes, he's like, there's no heartbeat, Maria. Your baby's gone. And those three words were the hardest thing I've ever heard in my life. I never imagined that I would be there. So many questions came to my mind. But for the first thing, like, ever, like, I wasn't blaming God. If anything, I was blaming me. I was saying, what did I do wrong? What did I do to lose my baby? And I just had this grief for so long. I remember isolating myself to my friends, even with my own husband. I I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror because I literally hated myself. But of course, with time, I learned that it wasn't it wasn't my fault. But it you can't help it because it's just one of those things that it's just it's so hard. It was life. Right. It was it was a baby that I was carrying. It was part of me and part of my husband. It it was part of us, you know? And I just remember being completely heartbroken, devastated. I left um work that day and I was like, what's the next steps? They're like, well, you have two options. You either can wait. There's no time telling of when you will pass it on your own. You can, you know, pass it on your own or we can remove it for you. And it's called a DNC. And this is the same day that you're asking This is the same day, yeah. And they were like, you don't have to decide now. And I was like, well, I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to let because I, in my mind, it just felt like it was like an, an abortion, abortion or something. And so I, I was like, no, I'll let it pass naturally. At this point, do you call Ehrlich and yeah. let him know? Mm-hmm. And he cried. He was like, he refused to believe it. He, he was speechless. We were so convinced, like, this is it. I know. Like, I remember when I heard the news, I'm like, in my mind, I was like, what if we pray for the baby to have a heartbeat again? Yeah. You know, like, I was like, I think we were all like, no, like, this cannot happen. Like, she has to have this baby because God has promised that she's going to have this baby. And so we were all, like, in denial of no. You know, I was like, what if we all go pray over her belly and say, God, you know, give him life again. But... I mean, we live in the world where things like this do happen. happen. You and know, like, it's that, not like God <clears throat> did it and right. it's not like you did it. It just happens. It just happens. And like, it's the sad thing is like you hear about miscarriages, you see it in movies, but you never imagine it happening to you. And um, I was just in such disbelief, you know, and that it was in that moment I was like, I went through so much. So much injections, so many bruises on my tummy, 
on my hip. So much blood work. Like, all of this. Like, I know it wasn't for nothing. Yeah. And so I remember I told my my boss, I was like, you know, I have to go. I'm in the process of a mis- miscarriage. And so I don't know when I'll be back, but I'm losing my baby, and I don't know when it will happen. And my boss was like, take the time you need. And so I took a week and a half off. Is Just, that how long it took? Or? It took a week. <clears throat> it took a week for me to pass him. And um, and then I just needed time to grieve. Um, but, you know, I called and, you know, because of the genetic testing, I was like, this baby's worthy of an identity. It's worthy of a name. And so I called and I was like, can I please at least find out what, what the, my baby was going to be? And they were like, you were going to have a boy. And we wanted a boy. We wanted a boy so bad. And um, so we named him Evan. And Evan means God is good. And wow. so despite everything that happened with the grief, with the heartbreak, God is still good. Wow. That's so powerful that even after you going through that, the pain and everything, it's amazing to still say God is still good and God is still a God of miracles. Yes. And you were able to still declare that yeah. and still believe it after your loss. And it wasn't easy. I mean, I, like I said, it, it was such a long grieving process for me. I think it took a whole nother level of our marriage of growth. I think of anything, it made Ehrlich's and I stronger than ever before. Um, even though at the time I felt like I was pushing him away, I felt it still somehow led us closer because it was something that happened to the both of us. Right. It wasn't just me. But he did say something to me um, because I remember there was one point we we were at um, a friend's house. We We had a friend gathering. And I remember I saw Ehrlich's laughing with the guys and I was just sitting there and I was isolated. And I, I felt so bad, but at the time, I, you know, I was like, I'm grieving. You were grieving, still. yeah. I'm still grieving over the loss of my baby. And um, everybody was trying to cheer me up, and I, I, I just wasn't in it. And I remember going home on our way back home. Alex was like, you know, baby, we were all, they all did this for us. Like, why were you isolated? Why were you like that? Like, you can't, we can't be at this dark place forever. And I remember telling him, like, how could it be so easy for you, for you to just forget, like, as if nothing happened? And that's when he cried. And he said, how do you think I could forget? He said, if anything, he's like, I'm broken. I'm in pain. He's like, but I know that he wouldn't want us to stay this way. Yeah. And... It was in that moment where it was like kind of like a wake up call, like Maria, get out of like this you dark can't place. Like stay we can't here. Stay like it's here. okay to grieve it, but not yeah. to just stay, stay there. there. Exactly, and I think that was kind of like a relevation for me, like a wake up call. You know, like snap I- out of it, Maria. Yeah. Like where is this determined Maria that you know knows that she's going to become a mother? And even though I lost him, I, I at that moment considered myself a mom. Because that was my child. And even though he wasn't physically with me, he had a heartbeat. Yeah. And so it was just such a long process for me to, you know, cope with. But then I remember the next, like, not the next day, but moments later um, with time, I remember saying, I, I want to try again. I want to try again. So you you were kind of grieving. Yeah. But you did you ever feel discouragement of, you know what, I don't want to go through this again because if I do it again and it doesn't work, I don't want to grieve again. Right. Did, did that ever come to your mind? Well, I've actually had some family members like t- like pr- try to prepare me. Like, Maria, you do know that if you try this again, this still is a possibility. But I kind of like toned that out and blocked those comments out. And I was like, no. I was pregnant though. That that that's what I was losing sight of. I lost my child, but I was pregnant. 
something that something that I was never that able doctors to doctors had told you that was exactly. probably like impossible for you to become pregnant. Exactly. And so that's what I was losing sight of. And I feel like in that moment, like looking back, that was the enemy trying to distract me. Like, you know, he was just trying to focus like on my pain for me to focus on my pain and this dark place. But I was losing sight of what God did in me. Right. I was pregnant. He had done something in he you. He did. He cleared my womb. He healed it. And I was able to have a child. Right. And so I was like, no, I was pregnant. Something that I wasn't able to become before. So he's going to do it again. He yes. did it once. He's going to do it again. Yes. And so that that was my like new like motive. Like He did it once. He's, he's going to do, do it, it again. again. And so... We're like, okay, let's do it. So do the protocol again. Back to the injections. When do you start this process again? So that was in January, um, back in January. And then so we lost Evan in January, so February, March. I want to say March. Okay. March we were doing um, the injections again. So two months later. Okay. Um, we started the process again, but then COVID happens. Yes. Oh, Gabby. <laughs> then it's, it's like it was just adding and adding. adding. Oh so we were almost, we had a scheduled transfer date for me. Oh, because at this point, do you still have to, you can just go ahead and transfer? No, I no. still have to do the protocol to prepare okay. my, my womb again. Okay. So um, I was already doing the injections again. And so we had a scheduled date for May for our transfer. But then COVID happens in March, Right. Right. So my doctor calls me. He says, Maria, you know, we have, there's COVID now. Um, we're literally in a global pandemic. Do you still want to continue with this upcoming transfer? And I said, you know, I understand that we're in a global pandemic, but what does that have to do with me changing my mind of me wanting to have my child? That's what you answered. That's what my response was. He then goes and tells me, well, it's because it's so new and we don't know how deadly this could be. We just know that it's not good and it's spreading fast. We don't know how it affects pregnant women. I just want to make sure that you want to move forward with this. And I remember that kind of like entered a little bit of fear because a doctor's telling me this and I'm like, why, you know? So I talked to, he's like, don't make an answer now. Just talk to your husband. And Earl was like, I mean, I hear him, but no, he's like, let's, let's move with this. Wow. So I was like, yeah. So I called him back and he's like, well, I need you to sign like a waiver. Like basically saying like, if you forego and anything happens, like you already this knew was this your... was coming. <laughs> and that's crazy because, um, if you think about it now that we know everything that we've lived <laughs> through yeah. the pandemic, mm -hmm. if I were to like, if I were to be in your shoes, I would have been like, oh my gosh, this is such a hard decision to make. Yeah. Do I do it? Do I not do it? But, you know, back then your desire and your determination to be a mother was so strong that you're like, I don't care about the pandemic. I know. What I mean, pandemic? Honestly, <laughs> like, honestly, it's like when you hear it, it sounds like we're in a global pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, man, but that you know, sounds like, really uh, bad. Okay, but I want a baby. <laughs> exactly. Like pandemic or not, I still want a child. <laughs> right. But, you know, when he said it, like it kind of sounded like, like, dang, like that's, this is intense. Serious. It's serious. And so I called him back and I was like, no, we're going to move forward. We want to. He's like, okay. So we were continuing the injections two weeks later. So this was now like sometime in April. He was like, um, we have unfortunate news. We're cancel We're closing our offices. That's and when everything began to close. Yes. That's when things were closing. And he said, um, we're closing our offices. We are canceling every upcoming transfer. I remember my heart shattered. Because we were this close. I was like, what? So now I can't? No. Like, this isn't fair. Just because of a pandemic? <laughs> like, you know, that was what my yeah. mind was. Yeah. You know, like, how, like, what about me? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so it canceled. It was out of our hands. And I was like, well, when are you guys going to open? They were like, well, we don't know. We don't know. You know, these are just things that happen that are out of our hands. And, you know, since it's out of our control, we, we have no answers at the moment. Um, as of right now, we're closed till further notice. 
And I just remember just being completely disappointed. I of was, course. I was like, because you were so excited exactly. and looking forward to May. Mm -hmm. And then they tell you, oh, we're sorry, we're closing. And we don't know when it's going to open. Exactly. So we don't know when we're going to be able to transfer to do this transfer. Right. And so that happened. And so I was like, okay. I know I'm just going to continue to pray for God to open doors or for them to open again because like I want my baby. And so um, I remember that was when I was trying to be in my best like health. Like I was exercising. That's when I was jogging. Um, I think that was that the best shape that I've ever been. So it's like every, every little setback, God always uses it for, for something. Our good. Exactly. You know, like, you're like, you know what? Let me focus on myself. Let me get prepared. Mm -hmm. Let me work on me. Yes. And so that's what I did. I was like, okay, let me just use this to help me even better my chances for this next pregnancy to be successful. So I exercised. I was eating, you know, not that I was eating poorly, but I mean, <laughs> I, I I needed to make better choices right. <laughs> yeah. um, with my eating habits. And so I I did that. I used those those months to eat better work out and just take care, better care of myself. And, um, then all of a sudden this was in June, June. Yeah. It's like a month later, a month later. And they were like, okay, we're opening our, we're slowly opening our offices again, but there's a lot of rules. Like you can't, your spouse cannot go with you to the transfer things. And I was bummed about that, but I was like, okay, well I can just have him wait in the car, you know, whatever. If this is what it has to take, then we'll, we'll do it. And so um, they called us and they were like, but we're, we're doing only, we're only accepting patients who are 35 and older. And I said, what? They're like, yes, it's because they're more on a biological clock. And I remember I was so upset because to me, that was just an injustice. That, that was not fair. Like, like, for example, you're deserving of a mother just because you're older than me, but I'm just as deserving. You know what I mean? Right. I felt like the age had was completely irrelevant because I felt they were taking my desires, minimizing my desires of becoming a mother just because of the age difference. And I remember, you know, I was like, no, that like that's not right. I'm going to fight for this. And so I remember writing a letter. Really? I didn't know about this. <laughs> yes. I wrote a letter to the management department of the – the facility of the fertility department and they you see this is what she means when she wants something and she's <laughs> persistent she'll do whatever it takes oh i left voicemails <laughs> I got. wow yes and so they finally answered and they said maria will take you wow yep. <laughs> it was amazing honestly i was like you know what i know this is pushing it but i'm gonna do whatever it takes wow because i was i mean and you know what <laughs> that reminds me that sometimes you know there are blessings that are there yeah but they require for us to fight for fight them, for them. Mm -hmm. you know they're there but you know what are we going to do are we just going to sit there and wait for it to come mm -hmm. but we can delay it yes you know and i think if i were in your shoes i would have just been like okay i guess i'll wait when you call me <laughs> right you know but no you fought for that for your blessing yeah. i really i really did i mean <laughs> god gave me strength he really did because he knows i could not do it in my own strength he has helped me throughout this whole process. And I'm, I never take that for granted. So, um, they called me and <laughs> they're like, okay, Maria, we'll, we'll take you. Like, you know, just start your medication again. I was like, okay. So I was doing just that. And my transfer date was scheduled for July 1st, 2020. I was like, okay, we got this. And I was telling, I wrote the date down and I told Earl, we're going to start praying for this date. Wow. July 1st, 2020, I will become pregnant. And so I just remember writing it on my journal. I know every day I was writing on my journal, like I will be pregnant. I will be pregnant. Wow. I will be pregnant. And, um, so July 1st comes and again, I don't, we didn't want to know the gender. Um, so at this time, obviously we have four left right? Four of my embryos left. So we do, we go on with the transfer and, um, they're like, okay, Maria, you already know the deal. You have to wait two weeks. How did you feel that day? I was honestly, I was so anxious. Okay. And I think part of the reason was because Ehrlich's wasn't there with me. 
um, I really wanted him to be there because it's such a big moment. Right. And he was there with me the first time, but because of COVID reasons, like they weren't, they were limiting the right. people coming in and stuff. So, um, that was the only thing I feel that that was why I was kind of anxious because he wasn't there. With he wasn't you. there. But I remember that day I gave him a kiss. I was like, I'm on my way to pick up my baby. I remember you saying something like that. <laughs> yes. And, and he was excited and he was like, yes, baby, it's going to happen. So transfer finished, I come back in the car and I felt this peace. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but other than it was just this peace. I was like, it's, it's working. It's, it's already done. It, it happened. And I remember praying. It's been done. It, yes. Like it's been done. It's been done. Like I am pregnant. So I remember waiting those two weeks, but Gabby at that time, I couldn't. So <laughs> I took pregnancy tests and I remember, I think it was five days. Did after. you do this with Evan? Did you take pregnancy tests? No, I tests? didn't. Okay. So with the, <laughs> with the first pregnancy test that I took, it was like the fifth day after transfer. I couldn't wait. I was like, <laughs> I'm not going to wait another five days. And I saw a very, very faint line. Like, but like very, like you would have to zoom in, like on, you take a picture of it with your phone and you'd have to zoom in to look at it. And, but I was like, it's there. It's there. And I was, I told Erlich, so I was like, baby, it's there. Do you see it? And he's like, I see something. <laughs> he's trying to go with the flow. Yeah. And then, so the next day I took another pregnancy test and that line got a little darker. When I say a little, like very little. Yeah. But it was there. Yeah. I was like, baby, do you see? He's like, yes, baby, I see. <laughs> Dude, I took a third one. And it got darker. Wow. And I was like, oh, yeah. I, I, was, I was praising God. I was like, God, thank you. I knew it, but I just wow. had, to, I had to see it. Like, <laughs> I had to see it because, like, this has just been such a journey. And I just I yes. needed to see it. And so I took another one. Oh, my God. The last one. I took four pregnancy <laughs> tests. And it was the darkest it's ever two complete dark lines do you still have them? i still have it and i took pictures of it and saved it for memories but i was like you know even though i knew it's just one of those things when you see it too you yeah know? you wanted to go through that I, I wanted to i have exactly. a pregnancy test and i wanted my process to feel somewhat normal because this is not really normal right co compared you to other know right that, that you already have an embryo exactly and so I was like, I want to at least feel some kind of norm, like normality of this process. And that's me taking an at-home pregnancy test. Right. And when I saw those two lines, I sent the picture to Ehrlich while he was working. I'm like, baby, do you see it? He's like, yeah, Lord, I saw it since the first time you showed me. He's like, yes, we, I, I knew that we were pregnant, you know. I was like, oh, I'm so excited. When we just, so by my appointment, it's just to confirm that, I am indeed pregnant. But you were you were going so happy because you knew. What I already they were knew. Tell you. But like I went just you know because so that way they can have it in their system, right. like you know that that you're pregnant, you know. So I got my blood work done. They called me the next day and she congratulated me. The nurse, she's like Maria, congratulations! Your HCG levels are super high. Like you are super pregnant. Wow. You're about five and a half weeks pregnant. Wow. And I was like. Oh, and I, even though I already knew, I cried. Yeah. I cried. Because now, was, like, it's someone. Yes. A doctors are confirming exactly. to you. Exactly. And I was just like, oh, my God can do anything. There's nothing impossible for him. Yes. And, like, uh, I was I was just so thankful. Overjoyed. So thankful. And um, so I remember I told Erlich, like, when do you want us to tell our families? He's like, whenever you want, I'm ready. Like, I'm ready now if you want. And it's so funny because you said the transfer was July 1st. Yes. I saw you July 4th. Yes. And when I saw you, I'm like, is she pregnant? <laughs> like That's crazy. It's crazy. And I was like, oh my gosh, I think she's pregnant. I didn't know. You didn't know my transfer date. No, yeah. I didn't know it was July 1st, but... In my mind, I'm like, does she naturally get pregnant? <laughs> but then I found out, I was like, wow, she was pregnant when I saw her. That's amazing. Yeah. And I, I was just still like in awe of it all. And I was just over the moon, so happy. And, and you know, I didn't want to go back to like, oh, but be reminded of what happened of my past of like with Evan. And I was like, you know, now whatever we're having, our baby gets to have an angel. 
yes. in heaven and they're going to have a brother watching over him yes. or her, you know? And I'm going to remind, once my baby's old enough, I'm going to tell them like, you know, you this have a, happened. you have a sibling that's in heaven and this is what happened. Um, because I never want him to be forgotten because he was mine. Right. And so, um, time went on and we had to continue to get ultrasounds to confirm and they were like, congratulations. And I remember graduating Aww. from the fertility <laughs> um, specialist. And they were like, to a regular, to a regular OBGYN. Wow. And that was a huge deal. I was like, oh. wow, Maria. It was amazing. And everything from that point on just continued to go so well. And I was, my pregnancy was beautiful. And a lot of my friends, they were like, Maria, like, I'm so jealous. Like, you had such a beautiful pregnancy because I didn't get nausea I didn't throw up like nothing it was so smooth it was so smooth but you know what I genuinely believe that God gave me that pregnancy yes. because of everything that we went through of course I think he, maybe like this was like you know what this is what I'm gonna give you this because <laughs> you've helped you've through. Gone through so much already yes. like let's give it easy to her and it's just you know for all the ones for all the moms that are able to have that can conceive naturally, yeah. you know, it's just like, we should be even more thankful, more grateful to God to know, you know what? I don't have to go through this mm -hmm. because when I was working at a, a daycare, a private daycare, I met so many women. I didn't know about IBF mm -hmm. until I started working like in 2012. Yeah. And I would hear all these stories of women that would go through that process you know, and then they would get their baby. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many women out there that cannot have kids. Mm -hmm. And here we are taking it for granted or we take it so lightly, right? you know, and it's such a big deal. It's such a big blessing. It is. And the day that I got pregnant with Brielle, I cried, Maria. And I told Fed, like, it's not that I knew I couldn't have kids because you know, I already have a, my son, but I cried of so much gratefulness because I'm like, God, I'm able to have a baby, yeah. you know? And I thought it had took like two years for me to get pregnant. It had been two months, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, there's people that go through one, two years, but I've known people that go through 10, yes. 15 years without being able to have a baby. Mm -hmm. You know, like what could you tell someone that has struggled for so long that maybe has been scared to do IBF? Well, one thing is to, what I would say would be don't be scared. I know it's easy, like easier said than done, but we're all called to become mothers. You know, like I, I genuinely believe that, you know, I believe if you have that desire, it's because God deposited in you like he did in me. It, there's no coincidences with that. I genuinely believe that if you want something so hard, you fight for it. And I know that, well, I'm speaking for myself, like, oh, I'm going to be looked at like, oh, you can't be, you, you, you had to go through this route to get pregnant. And you feel like somewhat kind of like judged, right? Like you're not worthy enough to be, to conceive naturally. But sometimes what I've learned with my process is that God uses tools and people in order to show his glory. Yes. And that's what I've learned from my process that even though it wasn't easy and it was such a long journey and it was hard and there were so many tears shed and so many bruises physically from, you know, injections and what have you. But at the end of the day, God is still good and he came through and what he promised he will fulfill. Yes. Just like what he spoke over my life. Um, you know, he spoke that years before, where I'm at right now, right. little did I know I'd be where I am right right now till this day. So that that would just be my advice is if you really want it, you know, whether it be IVF, IUI, or, you know, just seeking a fertility specialist help, I would say go for it yes. just because it's worth it. You have nothing to lose. You would lose by not even trying, by not right. trying, but right. by giving it your all, I believe God rewards us for our efforts and for us chasing after our dreams. Yes. And it's beautiful to look back and all those moments where you felt like, oh my gosh, when is this going to happen? And you look back, the blessing was so, so close. Yes. 
you know, they told you in May, mm-hmm. hey, we're not going to be able to, to transfer until we don't know when. Right. But then it happened in July. Yep. Two months later. Two months later. And now your baby girl is six months. She's six months. My and baby. she's precious. Thank you she's so much. a doll. Thank she's you. beautiful, Maria. And I can only imagine what you feel when you see her every oh, day yeah. and you're like, wow, God is so good. Oh, every single day. I I love that girl so much. Yes. I look at her, I'm like, you are literally a miracle from God. Yes. And I promise like myself, I promise Erlix, and I even promise her that I will let her know that for the rest of her life, that she is not only a promise from God, but she is God's miracle. Yes. And she's just absolutely perfect in every way. I, I love her so much. She's the best thing that's happened I wanted, to me. I wanted you to bring her. <laughs> I know. She's with Erlix. <laughs> but you know what? When I, when I was writing about today, I'm like, she's obviously 100% a miracle. But I was like, every baby that's born, it's such a miracle. Oh, yes. Yes. You know, every baby, because it's, you know, nine months and everything they have to go through, the development. Yes. What we go through as moms mm-hmm. and everything. I'm like, wow, every baby is such a blessing, yes. such a miracle, you know, that it's just amazing. Oh, yeah. It amazes me what God does in us. And when you were saying that, you know, God has given us that. I remember hearing someone say that we come from Eve, right? Mm -hmm. And Eve means life. And that's exactly what we do. Mm -hmm. We give life. Yeah. You know, that's what God, God created us to do, to bring life, Mm -hmm. not just as, you know, mothers, but we bring life to our husbands. We bring life to wherever we go, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's just amazing how God gave you your little girl. I know. You, you, there. I'm sure you can't wait to tell her the whole story oh, of yes. everything, how everything happened, how she was conceived. She's a frozen little baby. <laughs> she was frozen since 2019, and here That's she crazy. is, 2021 She's baby. I mean, you should have named her Elsa because <laughs> she was frozen. <laughs> she was frozen. <laughs> oh my gosh! For real though, I mean, she she is a miracle. She's she's just such a blessing, and one thing that. I can say, and I'm not being biased because she's my daughter. She just brings so much joy to like everyone she encounters. She is such a happy girl. She is such a cutie. (laughs) If you want to see her, follow her on her Instagram. She (laughs) is the cutest baby. She has colored eyes. Her eyelashes are probably even longer than yours. I think they're longer than mine. Yes. Like it's just crazy. But (laughs) you know, it, your story reminds me of the verse that says, um, oh darn it, I don't know it in English. <laughs> but in Spanish it says that okay, los que siembran con lágrimas, oh, yes. mm-hmm. con gozo van a, a, a recoger, you know, cosechar. And, cosechar. Mm-hmm. and even though you cried so much, you went through that pain, you know, for, for that period of time, for that season of your life, of the loss of Evan. And now you get to enjoy, you know, your Ariella Grace. Now, after that, I mean, I'm sure you still remember him. Oh, yes. And, you know, you still feel that. But now you get to enjoy the blessing that God gave you. Oh, yeah. And I can't imagine, you know, what you're feeling or what it feels like to go through that. I I feel, you know, I feel honored. I feel so special because it's like even where you feel like you're stuck, God doesn't forget you. He hears your prayers. He hears your cries. Like, it doesn't go unnoticed. And I know, I knew yes. in my heart that God was going to take me out of this. I knew that he was going to, sh- like I said, show his glory and be like, no, I'm going to do a miracle in you, Maria. Yes. And I and I know, and I knew it with every ounce of my being. I knew that he deposit, deposited that in me to become a mother for, for a reason. And like, I see Ariella and I'm like, now I know why. Yeah. Like, she's just, she's just amazing. Yes. And you know what? And I'm so glad because I know you had posted on your in your social media mm-hmm. of your journey and everything. Yes. And I remember you saying how many people, how many women identified themselves with you. Mm-hmm. And they were like, you know, thank you for sharing this yes. from what you had told me. So I feel like there's a lot of women that maybe not 
don't speak about it Mm -hmm. or they don't speak about the pain, the grief that they go through. And some that probably do stay in that dark place because they're just so afraid of going through it again. So I feel like your story is going to inspire. It's going to bring peace and maybe, you know, even say, you know what, if God did it with her, God is going to do it with me. Yes. And I want you to know that if God did it with her, he can do it with you too. 100%. You just have to believe it and do what it takes in your part, you know, and let God take control of the rest. And like, that's what looking back, I'm like, if this is me being a vessel to be used by God to bring faith and hope to others, then right. Then let me be used by right. God for you that reason. Be used. Um, I just wanted to see if there was anyone, um, any other questions that I had because it's such a, a, a beautiful, but I know it was a very long process. It was like your whole birth and everything would have to be like another whole episode oh, yeah. <laughs> of that story. Cause that was just like another story, but God was in control yes. from beginning to end. to end. And when God promises something, he will fulfill it to yes. the end. He will, you know, and he took care of you. He took care of Ariella mm-hmm. and she came a month earlier. She came um, one month and two days earlier. Wow. And I even, um, when I was six months pregnant, I had COVID with her. And that was a whole nother thing. And, you know, again, you know, I felt like sometimes even when things seem to go, everything go well, sometimes would always- <laughs> sometimes these things pop up that you would never expect. But I believe that our faith is always tested. Yes. You know, and I was like, you know what? Of course, in that moment, because COVID was still fresh, I was like, oh my goodness, my baby. Like, that's all I cared about. Like, is she okay? But God covered us from beginning to the end. And even with COVID, she was completely fine. I was fine. I didn't even have like the worst case of COVID, let's say, like compared yeah. to other people. Right. Thankfully, I'm, I'm so thankful that even during my journey of, you know, with that, God covered us and, oh, and yes. took care of us through it all. Yes, because I know you mentioned, well, you didn't mention, but uh, she was born at 35 weeks. Yes, 35 weeks and five days. And does she go into any sort of no. NICU or any help? She didn't on have anything? any complications. She, The doctor said she's a rock star, and she wow. truly is. I mean, I, if anything, we stayed for that week at the hospital because of me. <laughs> it wasn't even it because was, of me. Ariella was ready to go home two days after. She didn't even go to the NICU. They, she got all the testings done. Um, because you know she was born a whole month early, she passed every test. Wow! And she was ready. She was born four pounds, um, fifteen ounces. She was born four pounds. She was born four pounds, oh, fifteen Maria, ounces. She was tiny. She was a tiny little thing. Oh, but she was so cute. She's so cute. Oh, I didn't know she was four pounds. She Maybe was four pounds. <laughs> yeah, four pounds. I mean, she was born a whole month early. So yeah, four pounds, fifteen ounces, eighteen inches long. Wow! She was long. But wow, Maria. Yeah, she she passed with flying colors. The doctors were even amazed. They're like, wow, like she doesn't even need to go to the NICU. And her lungs, everything was. Her lungs were completely healthy. Her heart was healthy, was so strong. She was able to stay in the room with me and Ehrlich while we were in the hospital, while I was being monitored because of my preeclampsia. but she was ready to go home. Wow. And again, it was it was just God. It was God. It was God. Yes. So You know, we just want to encourage you today that if you've gone through something similar or maybe you you haven't been able to have a baby and you've tried for so long, maybe it's time to try something different, you know, because I feel like maybe in our culture, sometimes Mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, no, like why do that kind of technology? (laughs) Exactly. And and that's what I'm saying. That's when some people don't be influenced by what people think. That's also another advice that I would like to give for those who are trying. Who cares at the end of the day, what people think at the end of the day, if it's you and your spouse that want this baby, you fight for it. No matter what levels you have to take, you go for it. Don't be influenced by what people say because at the end of the day, it's your child. That's and, right. And it's that's your family. It's your family that you're fighting for. So you do whatever it has to take, no matter what measures it takes for you to get there, go for it. Yes, I agree. 
But thank you so much, Maria, for oh, sharing your story, opening your heart, because I know it's having to relive those moments of pain and grief and and you were willing to tell and share your story here with us. So thank you so much. Oh, and welcome. I pray that this blesses you. And if you know, you know of someone, share this video with someone. And we just pray that it blesses you. Yes. But thank you so much, Maria, for coming. Oh, thank you for having me. It was such an honor. And I'm so glad that I got to share my journey with yes, you. Yes. I learned a lot of things that I didn't know with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll see you guys on our next episode. Bye-bye. Bye.